Welcome to a new lesson. In this lesson, we would look behind the scene on as to what happens when you read or write into HDFS. Let us first deep dive into HDFS write process. HDFS client is a JVM that has to run on the node which interacts with HDFS. Note that dfs.replication is the property which contains the replication factor of the blocks. This property can be customized to any setup. In pseudo distribution mode of deployment on HDFS, it is overridden and set to 1 in the configuration file hdfs-site.xml. By default, its value is 3. So, as a first step, client would communicate to name node that it wants to write into HDFS. At this point, the name node would perform various checks on the request like if the file exists or not or like if uh, the client has the correct permission levels or not to perform the activity. If all is fine, name node would return back to HDFS client with the list of nodes to be copied on. At this point, client would connect to the first data node and ask it to form a pipeline to subsequent data nodes. The data nodes would acknowledge as they successfully copy the blocks. Step 3, 4 and 5 would be repeated until the whole file gets written on HDFS. After that, the client would end with a completion message. In case of data node failure, the erroneous node is skipped and blocks would be written on the remaining nodes. Name node would observe the under replication and would arrange for the replication of the under replicated blocks. Same would happen when there are multiple node failures. The data needs to be written to at least one node and the under replicated blocks would be taken care of by the name node. Now let us look at how data nodes are selected by name node. If the client node itself is part of the cluster, name node would consider it to be the first node where the replication should happen. If it is not the part of the cluster, any node within the cluster is chosen, keeping in mind the node is not too busy or loaded. The second node is chosen off the rack as the first one was chosen. The third one is chosen to be on the same rack as the second one. This forms the pipeline. Now let us look at the simulation run which we had seen in the earlier lesson. The file is broken into blocks and then replicated and then distributed across the file system. Now if you observe if one of the node or even rack fails, there are still all the blocks of the file available. Failure of multiple racks is more serious one and less probable to happen. Also it is to be noted that the whole procedure of selection and replication happens behind the curtain and developer or client doesn't need to worry about what happens in the background. Before we look at how read happens, let us look at how distance is calculated in HDFS. In a distributed network, bandwidth is a scarce commodity. Hence, the idea of distance is based on bandwidth. Block to be referred on the same data node is said to have zero distance. If the block resides on a different data node, but on the same rack, the distance would be counted as two. If the block resides on a node on a different rack, distance is considered to be four. And lastly, if a block resides on a node in a different data center, the distance is taken to be six. And these are the only possible cases. Now let us look at the anatomy of read. First, the HDFS client sends a read request to the name node. In response, name node returns the data nodes containing the first few blocks. Name node returns the list starting from the closest node containing that block to the furthest. So the client would connect to the first node and read the blocks one by one. Let us again look at the failure cases that can happen while read. There can be two failures. First, the data block is corrupt. In that case, the next data node containing the block is contacted. Second, if the data node itself fails, let us say D7 fails while the block B1 was being read. Then the next node in the list would be contacted. In this case, client would make a note that D7 is a bad data node and would not consider it later if it appears in another list. Please go through the key points for this lesson.